Aldalipo still drives what we're doing here at the center and, and Iowa State University. Um, the words, when you read Aldo Leopold right now, the, those words remain true. Uh, uh, San County Almanac was published in 1948, and those words, as you look about the land ethic and what it means to be a steward of the land, all of that comes through, and we could apply those words through even today yet. The Leopold Center now is, as you well know, Neil, more than 20 years old, 22 years old. Uh, started back in about 1988 in that general time period. Um, we uh, like to think that all of our work ultimately comes back to soil and water. Uh, our our, our uh, start of the Leopold Center really came as a result of the farm crisis years and, and also the water quality problems we were having back 20 years ago and we're still having them. A little bit more about uh, what we're looking at here at Bear Creek. I know the Leopold Center, that we've put a lot of funding into it over the years, and it's a real demonstration site, but uh, what, are, what are we seeing? What's being demonstrated? Well, Bear Creek is now uh, started in the, in, the, uh, in the late 90s, uh, well over a decade old right now. And what it amounted to was it, it exemplified a partnership, a partnership of federal, local, university, state partners and it represented a farmer's desire to say, I think I can do something different for the landscape. So what we've done out here with research and education, we've, we've simply demonstrated proven practices of buffer strips, riparian zones. We've looked and we've measured then how much of the, how much sediment then moves from the field now with those 60 foot wide or wider barriers out here in those buffer strips. So what it is, it's a learning site, it's a laboratory, we bring students out here, we uh, bring many foreign visitors out here, and many Iowans. And I think the message for them is, look what, what can be done. This works. And it's not necessarily new science, it's just good science that you can apply on your own land. If we're going to make a difference and change this landscape, the nature of the landscape, redesign the landscape, um, which I think we need to do, it's going to take um, a team effort. Right, you serve as a leader of both the state and national soybean grower associations. Yes. Uh, how important are issues of soil conservation and land stewardship to, to most farm groups? To the Iowa Soybeans Association, it's really important, and to most farm groups, I think it is important. Uh, Iowa Soybean Association has been one of the leaders in, in in environmental programs and in conservation programs and in sustainability and, and it's uh, because of the forward thinking of uh, farmers in the past in the last 20 years and currently and, and with a great staff that we have uh, we're, we're leaders in the nation in, in conservation and sustainability and those kind of issues uh, we've always taken a broad view of things, not just narrowly focused on soybeans. We've looked at the large picture and, and knowing that uh, sustainability means that we have to be also be profitable. We have many great farmers here in Iowa, but we also have many farmers that are financially stressed and uh, they indeed will probably push the land uh, in some cases to uh, to uh, make that dollar and, and they want to stay on the land, they want to stay farming and this is just only human nature. There's a real challenge out in the landscape right now because of economics, because of the lure of, of new industry, of ethanol and things like that, that uh, farmers, some farmers are making choices that keep land in production, for example, right up to the creeks. We don't, they, they've taken out some of those uh, grass waterways. They have not put in uh, buffer strips. So uh, we, we have uh, an immense amount of uh, opportunity. Part of it's financial, part of it's not. Uh, 
as I said before, we have to, in order to be sustainable, we also have to be profitable. We have to be able to make a living. And that's when I get to travel around the world and every, every place I go, uh, you find out that uh, people really care about their families and they want to do what's best for them and make sure that they have a better, their, their, sib, their siblings and their children have a better life than they have. So it's, it's, all about, it's all about making a little money, but at the same time, uh, we really are in tune with the land. I think most of us are and love the land and uh, want to do the right thing. I think uh, when you own the land, it, it does give you more incentives to, uh, to take care of it and look to the future for your family and, and those uh, next generations that you might have. But it seems like more and more landowners are, are interested in, in conservation. On the other hand, uh, the land's under more pressure than it's ever been. It's, you know, it's, uh, we've got to produce more income off of it, more bushels per acre. Um, there's uh, more threats to it now by our spreading development. Um, uh, we're kind of forced, uh, landowners are kind of forced to p put land in production that's, you know, marginal. Owning land is complicated, and I think especially if you're a multi-generational family who are now absentee, it's hard to make decisions. You may not be here, so you don't know how your tenant's operating. On the other hand, there's some great tenants out here that are going the, uh, the extra mile. Uh, foreign owners or absentee owners, I would say, um, if they're careful about who they get to as their tenant to take care of the land, I think it, it is a sustainable program. Some of these absentee landowners, uh, the farm is not now their sole source of income, so it's one of their uh, income streams. So they actually have some flexibility that maybe uh, the previous owner didn't have. I'd say short-term planning horizons are, are a problem, whether it's the, the lease and the ability to constantly turn over land and turn it over to the highest bidder. Uh, that generally has very bad consequences for the land if someone is maximizing profits by constantly turning it over at a land rent auction. And I think from the Leopold Center's perspective, uh, we need to be thinking about not only profit and, and, and the stability of the current year, but five years, 10 years, 20 and 30 years down the road. And that's a challenge. Much of our thinking in agriculture right now, whether you're the farm owner or you're the renter, uh, you're looking at the end of the year, you're looking at taxes, you're looking at profit. And uh, part of our problem in agriculture is we, we probably don't think in the long term, we think in the short term. Short term is one to two to three years, and in soil conservation and water quality, that's just a blip. Uh, that doesn't even, they hardly measures, Neil. It's gonna take more than just people like uh, myself who, uh, I, I live in a city. It, it's gonna take more than people like me saying, you farmers need to make a difference. I think it's gonna take those of us living in the towns and the cities, those of us farming, together say it's our joint responsibility. So I think when farmers make when we, when we ask farmers to make a decision to implement a stewardship practice or change a behavior, I think we as citizens need to say, I need to probably come forward and be ready to help pay for that. Perhaps my choices and what I expect also may need to change. I cannot keep my same choices, my same behavior, and only expect the farmer to change. So it's going to take a, a joint effort, it's going to take rethinking, it's going to take new policy. So if, if we as a society want uh, wildlife habitat, if we want clean water, if we want places to recreate, um, we're going to have to figure out a way of compensating a landowner and I think uh, we're way overdue at doing that. And then it doesn't matter uh, so much um, who the owner is or, or who the tenant is because that system is in place and they know uh, and the taxpayer knows uh, that that's an expectation of their ownership. I'm hopeful that um, there is a stewardship ethic or even what we call a culture of conservation that is, that is growing right now across the state.
Do you think that, that uh, there's more that the, the federal government and the USDA should be doing to try to provide incentives <coughs> for those landowners to adopt soil conservation? Yes, I really do. Uh, many of the conservation programs that we've had recently have, have been enacted in the Farm Bill, but then they haven't been funded well, and, and that's uh, discouraging too. And I think if some of those programs would have been funded better, we would have even better conservation than we have today. One of the things that I'm most enthused about is that this does not necessarily take a lot of new science or something that hasn't been developed. I'm a firm believer that we have a lot of things on the shelf right now, right here at Bear Creek, that can be implemented and can make a difference. Sure.